Hi, I'm Ashley. Before I dive into my story, please like and subscribe for more of my life's tales. I'm a 35-year-old finance professional, happily living in the house where I grew up. This cozy place, filled with childhood memories, became mine after my parents moved to Aspen. But my peaceful life took a turn one unexpected Saturday. The doorbell rang insistently. Through the frosted glass, I saw my mother-in-law, Linda, flanked by several others. My heart sank. Linda's visits, always unannounced, meant a day filled with discomfort. I opened the door, and without waiting for an invitation, Linda breezed past me. Ashley, we need to talk, she announced as if it were a royal decree. Behind her, Bob's brother Mike, his wife Karen, their kids and movers, started unloading a van full of boxes. What's happening, Linda? I asked, my voice edged with panic. We're moving in, Linda declared. Bob thinks it's a good idea. It's what families do in tough times. I turned to see Bob coming from the garage, nodding in agreement. It's all good, babe. We have the space, he said, dismissing my shock with a wave of his hand. But this is our home, Bob. Our private space, I protested, feeling the walls of my home closing in. Ashley, don't make a fuss. If you don't like it, maybe you should leave, Bob retorted sharply his slap of words stinging more than I could express. I was dumbfounded. Boxes and furniture cluttered my living room as Karen directed movers to the sunniest room for her new studio. I felt like a stranger in my own home. Overwhelmed and cornered, I whispered, I need to think about this, only to be met with dismissive looks. The invasion of my home reached its peak with each room overtaken by Bob, Linda, Mike, and Karen. They spread their belongings carelessly while I watched my once peaceful sanctuary turn into a battleground of wills. Trying to reclaim some semblance of order, I confronted them, my voice shaking with restrained anger. This is too much, Bob. You can't just take over my home like this, I protested, standing in the middle of the cluttered living room. Ashley, we're family. You're supposed to support us, Bob replied, parroting Linda's earlier assertions as if they were undeniable truths. But this is still my home, too. I countered, feeling the isolation of my position as they looked at me like an unwelcome guest in my own house. Linda scoffed. You're being selfish, Ashley. We need to stick together as a family. I snapped, unable to contain my frustration any longer. I need respect in my own home. You can't just barge in and take over. The room fell ominously silent, my defiance hanging heavy in the air. In response, Bob's face twisted with anger. The sound of his hand striking my cheek echoed shockingly in the silent room. If you don't like it, you can leave, he shouted, his voice cold and final. The sting of the slap was less painful than the betrayal. Tears blurred my vision as I realized the depth of my solitude in this conflict. With no ally in sight, I retreated to our bedroom, their indifferent conversations chasing me down the hallway. I quickly packed essentials into a bag, each item a heavy reminder of the shattered life behind me. With a deep, shaky breath, I stepped out of the house, the cool air greeting me like a somber friend. As I walked away, the finality of the door closing behind me marked a decisive turn in my life. I wasn't just escaping an untenable living situation. I was stepping towards reclaiming my independence and dignity. Though the betrayal cut deep, it catalyzed a new resolve within me, to rebuild my life on my own terms. The path ahead was daunting, yet it was a path I knew I had to take. After the upheaval at my home, I moved into a modest rental apartment, a place where I could gather my thoughts and plan my next steps. This small, quiet space became my sanctuary as I tried to navigate the chaos that had upended my life. My phone constantly buzzed with calls and messages from Bob and Linda, each one a mix of pleas and accusations. Ignoring their attempts to reach me, I focused on my own well-being and the actions I needed to take. My parents, outraged by the events, offered their unwavering support. You need to protect yourself and your property, Ashley, my dad insisted during one of our calls, his voice firm with resolve. With my parents' encouragement, I sought legal advice. Meeting with Miss Carter, a seasoned property lawyer, I laid out the details of my situation. In her office, surrounded by the reassuring weight of law books, I felt a sense of purpose solidifying. Miss Carter, I began. I inherited that house, and they've taken it over without my consent. She listened intently, her nod slow and understanding. We'll start with a notice of eviction, 
and consider a restraining order if they retaliate, Miss Carter explained. Her strategy was clear, offering a path through the legal maze to reclaim my home. Feeling empowered, I decided to take a firm stand. I cut off the utilities to the house. I called the utility companies, authorizing the disconnection. With each confirmation, I felt a mix of trepidation and resolve. This wasn't just about turning off the lights. It was a declaration of my independence from Bob and his family's manipulative grip. The repercussions were immediate. Calls flooded in, their tone now frantic and angry. Ashley, this is extreme. How could you... Bob's indignant voice filled my voicemail. I erased each message, steeling myself against the guilt and manipulation. This chapter of my life, though fraught with challenges, marked a crucial turning point. As I sat in the sparse light of my new apartment, planning my legal and personal moves, I felt a profound shift within me. The old Ashley, timid and accommodating, was receding, replaced by someone stronger, someone who was actively shaping her own destiny. The legal battle intensified as I took decisive action against Bob and his family. With the guidance of my lawyer, Miss Carter, I sent a formal notice of trespassing to them. The document was a clear declaration that they had no legal right to occupy my home without my consent. As soon as Bob received the notice, the tone of the conflict shifted. He began reaching out more frequently, his messages now filled with desperation and pleas for negotiation. Ashley, we can resolve this. Please, let's talk. One of his messages read. However, the sting of his previous betrayal remained too vivid for me to consider reconciliation. Miss Carter advised me to remain unwavering. Don't be swayed by his emotional appeals, she counseled during one of our meetings. This is about your rights and reclaiming your home. Concurrently, Bob's personal and professional life began to deteriorate. His behavior and our legal disputes had not gone unnoticed, and soon he faced repercussions at work. A mutual friend informed me that Bob had been suspended from his job at the garage, pending further investigation into his conduct. Bob and Linda tried to garner support from other family members, but the family was divided. While some showed sympathy, others chose to stay out of the fray, unwilling to be dragged into our public legal battle. In a last-ditch effort to sway me, Bob appeared at my rental apartment unexpectedly. His face was worn and tired as he stood in the hallway, pleading for reconciliation. We can fix this, Ashley. Just come home and we'll sort everything out, he implored. My reply was resolute, delivered through the closed door of my apartment. There's nothing left to discuss, Bob. You need to vacate my property and move on with your life. This is non-negotiable. Rejecting Bob's final plea marked a turning point for me. I had firmly closed the door on any possibility of going back to the way things were. My path was clear, guided by self-respect and legal action and there was no turning back from the journey of reclaiming my life and my independence. As the moving van pulled away from the curb, the finality of Bob and his family's departure from my home was palpable. For the first time in months, the house was silent, free from the constant noise and tension that had become its unfortunate new normal. I stood in the doorway, a mix of relief and triumph coursing through me, as I realized the full extent of what I had accomplished. I ventured through the rooms, each step echoing in the empty space that was once again solely mine. The walls, marked by the remnants of unwanted guests, needed a fresh coat of paint, a symbol of renewal, and a fresh start. I planned each renovation with care, selecting colors and fixtures that reflected my personal style, something I had suppressed for the sake of family harmony that was never reciprocated. In the midst of planning, my phone buzzed. It was Bob. His name on the screen no longer brought a pang of betrayal, but a reminder of the strength I had gained. The message was laden with apologies. I'm sorry, Ashley. I never wanted things to go this far. Can we meet and talk this through? I stared at the message, the words blurring slightly as I considered how to respond. This wasn't the first apology, but it felt more desperate. I replied with a firmness born of months of conflict. There's nothing left to discuss, Bob. I wish you well but it's best we go our separate ways. My phone rang almost immediately. His voice, once so familiar, now sounded distant and strained. Please, Ashley, just one conversation, face to face. For old time's sake? I leaned against the newly painted wall, feeling its cool, smooth surface. No, Bob, there's nothing you could say to change what happened. 
It's time for both of us to move on. There was a pause, heavy and laden with unspoken words, before he finally conceded. All right, Ashley. I hope you find happiness. I ended the call, a weight lifting from my shoulders. I wandered through the house, each room a canvas awaiting my touch. The kitchen would get new cabinets, the living room a vibrant splash of color. Every choice was a reclaiming of my space and my life. As I reviewed fabric swatches for the new sofa, the doorbell rang. Hesitant, I approached the door, half expecting to see Bob or Linda. Instead, it was my neighbor, Mrs. Thompson, holding a tray of cookies. Heard the moving truck? Thought you might like some of these? You look like you could use a good sugar rush. Her kindness was a balm, and as we sat sipping tea in my cluttered kitchen, I shared the broad strokes of my story. Mrs. Thompson listened, her expressions ranging from shock to support. You've done well, Ashley. Standing up for yourself isn't easy, but look at you, turning this house back into a home. The support was heartening, and as she left, I felt even more resolved to push forward. The evening was spent in the company of paint chips and design magazines, planning and dreaming of what was to come. Days turned into weeks, and the house slowly transformed. New fixtures replaced the old, walls dazzled with fresh paint, and the dark memories were chased away by bright new beginnings. Each addition was a testament to my independence, and a step towards a future I was now free to reimagine. One afternoon, as I arranged books on a new shelf, my phone buzzed. It was a text from Bob, another apology, this time saying he understood my need for space and hoped I could find it in my heart to forgive him someday. I read the message, my heart steady, and deleted it without a response. Forgiveness was possible, but forgetting wasn't, and I was no longer bound by the expectation of either. The house, once a symbol of familial obligation and compromise, had become a fortress of solitude and strength. I hosted a small housewarming party, inviting friends who had stood by me through the turmoil. Their praises on the renovations, the warmth of their company, and the laughter that filled the rooms were my true victory. As the last guest left, I turned off the lights and stood looking out the window at the quiet street. The battle to reclaim my life and my home had been hard fought, but I stood victorious, not because I had defeated anyone else, but because I had rediscovered myself. The house was not just a place of residence, it was a declaration of my resilience and my ability to forge ahead, no matter the odds. In the silence of the night, I realized that this was not just an end, but a beginning, a chance to build a life filled with choices made for me, by me. This was my victory, my liberation, and the first page of a new chapter in my life. The story has come to a close, and Ashley's journey of reclaiming her independence is complete. Now here's a question for you. Should Ashley have given Bob another chance to explain himself, or was she right to cut ties completely to move forward with her life? What would you have done in her situation? Share your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this story and want to hear more, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more engaging content like this. Your support helps us bring more stories to life.